Hey there, welcome back to Zombie Tactics. Today, continuing on with the food prep for the Lazy Late and Cheap series. I don't even know what part number this is. I'm going to have to label it when I, when I uh, do the editing. But today we're going to build a field expedient water filtration system. And a couple things are important about that. One of them is it's field expedient, meaning we can pretty much do this anywhere with all kinds of things that are lying around us that we would be able to find or make fairly easily. And the other one is, I'm referring to it as water filtration, and that ought to be a clue to you if you watched a previous video. This is a filtration system, or a filtration unit, and it's not a purification unit. It will do a very good job of removing all kinds of suspended particulates and microbial cysts and things like that. It actually does a really decent job, depending upon how much you use one particular ingredient, of filtering out chemical contamination and it does a, a decent job with bacteria. It doesn't really do anything for viruses, so you may want to purify the water after, after you run it through this filter. But this does a lot of pre-filtering for you, and it, it takes a big part of the, the, the worry out of drinking water. You really, uh, if you use this with water that kind of look good, looks good in the first place and you're not afraid of a viral outbreak of some kind, this is probably all you need. Now, having said that, uh, I want to let you know that this filter is based on a design that I first read about in probably some book by uh, Bradford Angiers, Bradford Angier or somebody like that, who was an early kind of survivalist naturalist. And this design has been used by all kinds of people over the years. This is kind of ancient technology. This is not something new. Um, so we're going to get right into it. I'm going to show you the parts that go into it, and I'll explain a little bit about these parts and why I'm saying this is field expedient. Um, along those lines, I bought some of the things that I've got on the table here with me today, and some of these things I just scrounged up. I spent no more than $12 going to a pet supply store to buy some of these things, and I did that only as a matter of convenience. I'll talk about the substitutions you can use from things that you can just find as we, as we go around uh, the list of items. My first item, actually, this is just my <laughs> McDonald's McCafe cup from this morning, uh, this morning's orange juice running my kids around and had to stop for McDonald's and I've cut a hole in the bottom of the cup here because water is going to go in here and it's going to come out here. This is going to form the body of our filter. This could just as easily be a plastic water bottle, a two liter soda bottle, um, a plastic bucket, uh, a length of PVC piping which is actually what some people have used to make these before when they're going down to South America or Africa or something like that uh, and they work pretty well in that. You can use anything because the system I'm going to show you scales up as large as you want to make it. So we're doing this small so that it, I can kind of keep this down to a manageable size. The second thing is just any kind of coffee filter I'm using in this case. But this might as well be um, t-shirt material, an old clean t-shirt that's um, you know that you cut up into strips or, or pieces or anything like that. I'm just using coffee filters for our, our purposes right here, got to pick up the cup. Cup. Uh, I bought some aquarium sand at Petco. And uh, there's nothing special about this sand except that it's clean and it's a fairly tight, you know, grind of sand. Uh, you can easily substitute uh, playground sand any or sand that you would find on the beach, anything like that. That would work just fine for the purposes here. Uh, you know, clean it off, set it out in the sun for a little while to make sure that any bacteria or viruses or anything like that on it are, um, are taken care of that way. That's a primitive way of, 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 of uh, sterilizing that component. But I just went ahead and bought it for convenience sake. On the other end of the spectrum, gravel. I bet you can figure out where to get gravel of from. I just, again, bought it to make it easy to go ahead and do this project. I didn't want to go running around riverbeds and things like that to pick up gravel. But this is nothing special about this gravel. Cost me a couple bucks for that. And the one piece that uh, is kind of interesting that you might want to buy anyway, I'll talk about that in a second, is activated carbon. This also go by, goes by the name of activated charcoal. And that's because what it really is is it's charcoal that has been that's gone through a chemical process to make its filtration qualities more efficient frankly if you find yourself some good pine or oak and you were to burn the wood to the point where you've got charcoal wash it off a little bit and then grind the charcoal up into, into little particles that would work in place of this so all of these things are things the charcoal 
the gravel, the sand, some kind of cup or container, bucket, whatever, as big as you want to make it, could be a 55-gallon water drum with a hole in the bottom of it or something for all I care. Um, and some kind of a, a cloth or paper-based filtering mechanism. I frankly wouldn't use paper. I'd use, like I said, an old t-shirt material or something like that. And those are the components we're going to use. Now I'm going to go back to the activated carbon for a second because some of you have um, commercially built water filtration systems like the um, like the like the Katadin Vario that I showed in the previous video that use an activated carbon core as part of their system. They use very little carbon in there and that just goes to show you how efficient this stuff is. It's very efficient. But rather than spending all the money that they want to charge you for a little teeny packet of activated carbon, you can go ahead and get this stuff and it will work the same or almost the same uh, and you can save quite a bit of money. This is about five bucks at Petco um, and it's available in various quantities. Activated carbon for an aquarium. Uh, good way to do that. So I'm going to move the camera a little bit and I'm going to show you how I'm going to construct this water filter and then we'll go ahead and we'll throw some water through it just to show you that it actually passes water. Uh, we'll be back in just a second. One of the nice little things about this project is that it can be done fairly quickly. I've got this little half of a paper coffee filter wrapped up and I'm just going to step it down in the bottom of the, the cup here trying to make sure that it covers as much of the bottom area as possible. In this case the, the paper filter is not really important for filtration purposes but what I want it to do is to cover the bottom of the cup because I'm going to put gravel on top of there and that's going to keep the gravel from plugging up this, um, this hole in the bottom. So I've opened up my gravel bag while I was off camera and we're just going to kind of pour it in there and I, see I'm already having problems getting that to, to stay on the bottom. It might be a good idea to, to get this a little wet or something. We'll just kind of go for it again. Be a little more careful about it this time. And I'm only going to put as much gravel as it takes to barely cover the bottom of the cup and then kind of scrunch it down. About that much gravel. Because all I'm really worried about is that this is the final stage of our system and we're good with that. Now on top of that I'm going to take probably more material because I really want to make sure that this forms a, a fairly tight seal around the perimeter of the cup and that nothing gets by it. I might even uh, wet this stuff down if I was really going to do a perfect job of it to make sure that it gets around the entire rim of the cup because what I'm going to put on top of that is my activated carbon and this activated carbon is actually a little larger size of a pellet than I'd like. I'm not going to grind it down further while I'm, in, while I'm doing this, but I'm, I, if I was doing this for real, I'd probably, um, I'd probably grind this up a little bit. And quite a bit of activated carbon there, because that's going to be the thing that's going to do most of the work for us. And the filter in between the activated carbon and the... Uh, the gravel is mostly there to keep small bits of activated carbon from getting into the filtered water. That won't harm you, but it's it's just kind of unsightly or unpalatable or something like that. Then I'm going to take another layer of filter or coffee cup, uh, I mean a, a t-shirt material or whatever, and I'm just going to kind of um, put this in here the best I can. I mean, in this case, I'm going to kind of fold it over the top like that, and we're going to throw a layer of sand on top. Now the sand acts as a, a basic kind of mechanical filter. It will filter out some items, uh, larger uh, floating suspended material and stuff like that. Uh, the sand will, will take care of for us. And some uh, microbial cysts, some larger particles, so that actually is a filtering mechanism. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of, I don't know, leave it like that or whatever. If I want to get a little fancy with this, I can actually then take another filter and put it over the top. And I might do that, but uh, my experiments in the past have shown that that's not always the best idea. Sometimes that just, you've got too much filter material and you can't get any water to pass through it. Um, so we've got the sand on the top, the carbon material in the middle and gravel on the bottom and finally a hole here and it'll go through several layers of paper 
or cloth filter at the same time. I'm going to cut the camera and then we're going to pour a little water through it just to show you that water does indeed go through the system. And then we'll talk about uh, this a little bit more. All right, well, here we are. It's the end of the world as we know it, and I feel fine. And I've got some really dirty kind of water from a stream that runs through the neighborhood. Um, it's kind of yucky looking. I'd actually like the water to be a little clearer than this before I tried to filter it. I might run it through something like the Sawyer .02 system that I showed before or the, the Katadin Vario to make sure that um, I, I've done a little bit better job of pre-filtering the water before I do this. But uh, I'm going to assume that I'm going to drink this. And, you know, I eat my own dog food when I do these videos. I test this stuff. I know it works. So I'm going to take my water filter. We're going to kind of nest this in a in a glass here at least to begin with and I'm going to slowly pour this I'm going to stir it up again just so that we can by the way you know one of the things you could do is if you if you let the silt and crud go to the bottom that that's less material you have to filter but I'm I'm testing my filter here so I want to make sure that this actually this actually works so since it's dry it doesn't work as well dry as when it's wet so it's going to take a little bit to filter this through and you can see how it might have been wise for me to leave a little more room on the top there and I might have to get, go back and get some more water but you can see that already if I move the camera around that we've got water coming out the bottom here and the first this is a uh, one little thing I really wanted you to see the first little bit of water that we do it's gonna have this charcoaly uh, look to it and that is actually charcoal dust that the first bit of water that you run through the system is going to have that charcoal dust in it it's not really bad for you to drink that uh, you know a lot of people will, will they'll consume charcoal just for the sake of uh, its health benefits but I'd recommend not doing it for any anything that might be sticking uh, to that charcoal that's that's adhering to it as it's coming through the filter system I'm going to continue to do this. You can see we've got a fairly good flow rate, and that flow rate will get better as the um, as the system is wetter. Generally, that charcoal. I'm going to go ahead and put this back here just for a second. Generally, that charcoal kind of look to the water. That is only the first few ounces of water that's going to do that. So I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and just toss this. Woo. And you'll get exactly the same behavior. Probably wasn't wise for me to put the bottom of my filter on the uh, the water that I'm filtering. <laughs> that's kind of a, a stupid move, but for the sake of uh, argument here we're we're fine. And I'll just continue to filter this water. One of our lessons we learned, of course, is that we might want to leave a little bit more room on the top here uh, to act as kind of like a basin or a reservoir for the water that's going through the sand. You can tell because the water doesn't go straight through it that it's actually having to, to go through some kind of medium. That's a combination of the sand and the paper mostly because the, the carbon uh, well, the carbon doesn't, doesn't act as much of a restriction of flow as you'd think, but it does uh, guarantee that uh, we're, we're filtering this water at a decent rate. You can see where there'd be an advantage to um, making this in a larger container that uh, you could do more water at once and you could get a greater flow rate. And rather than take all your time waiting on camera, I'm going to let that filter on through, continue on. We've still got a slight carbon tint there, but nothing that I'm really going to worry about. I'm going to go out and get some more, some more water and filter the whole thing through, uh, some more yucky, yucky water, and then I'll come back when I've got um, when I've got the whole thing done, and I'll just show you what it looks like post filtration. Well, here we are. I'm not sure if you can tell that there's still a slight uh, gray tinge to the water here. Um, 
the filter is starting to get pretty efficient now and I put a couple more rounds of swampy water through it and we're definitely not ending up with swampy water we're ending up with water that's been completely filtered and maybe we haven't gotten all of the carbon dust out of it but this water I think is 100 percent safe to drink matter of fact like I said I I eat my own cooking here so you know bottoms up <sighs> nothing funny or off tasting or anything about that I will say I did put my finger in the swamp water and taste it before and it definitely had the taste of something dead in it so just by the taste test alone uh, a tremendously efficient filter so far with a little bit of that gray carbon dust in it that goes away after the first use and it's not something that's really going to hurt you. Uh, I'll drink it. That's fine. Uh, again, as I said, if you're, if you're in an area where you're a little bit worried about um, viruses, I would go ahead and boil the water or go through ordinary sanitation like this. But in most cases, unless there's a very high concentration of something bacterial in the water, this is going to do a pretty good job for you. This is technology that's been used by survivalists and campers and... Uh, you know the pioneers for for centuries uh, going back so it's not like it's a brand new thing or whatever it's not perfect ideally you'd still want to have a system that used like reversed os osmosis or hollow carbon fiber filters and all kinds of stuff like that uh, ceramic filters and all that kind of thing uh, the gold standard of course being the Berkey filter system which is probably the most excellent thing out there if you're gonna go and buy something I did want to show you something though that you can put together for next to nothing that will act as a water filter and again you know the gravels just gravel the activated carbon is really charcoal it's better than charcoal because it's been chemically treated in a certain way with with oxygen but um, you can use charcoal to take the place of the activated carbon and it'll do a pretty good job for you the sand at the top just a thin layer of that as another filter medium and some kind of cloth uh, or paper filters in between to act as sieves and further filter out and kind of keep the, the ingredients here separated from each other. So that's my field expedient water filter. Uh, you know, I probably could have found a better, nicer looking container to make this in, but it works. Bottoms up against, again, <laughs> that's uh, this episode of uh, Zombie Tactics for today, and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye bye. Needs ice.